now let's go into SQLOL and see how we can use feature selection directly from SQL. Now, obviously, you don't want to kind of look at each other each other feature as it is one by one and kind of do your variance thresholding or Pearson correlation, whatever it is. So obviously SKLearn offers all of that for free. So let's now go and uh, do that uh, using SKLearn. So in SKLearn, what you can do is, there's this awesome uh, uh, functions that you can use, uh, which are called select K based or select percentile. So the idea in both of these cases is basically you can kind of just directly pass a function to kind of a function which basically gives you scores for each of the features, right? And then what it does is basically it kind of uh, computes the features, all the scores for all of those features by itself. And then uh, it selects the K-based out of this, right? So all you need to do is basically given a setup, you need to write a function which can basically give a score based on two arrays of values, right? So one X and any other value right so x and y or whatever you want to do it so just just give your function and or sql and basically implements the rest of the thing right it, it basically computes the scores uh and based on the scores it's it selects the one that are the top five or top ten whatever you want to do right so it removes all but the k high scoring features right so that is the that is the in case of select k base in case of select percentile it removes all but uh, user specified high scoring percentage of features right so it would in case of select percentile you would say i want to just keep the 25 top 25 percentile or the top 50 percentile or top 20 top 30 percentile right so that's what you can specify in select k base you say i want to just go for the first top 10 or top 100 right and what is a top 10 and top 100 out of it's basically a score uh, what is that score out for and that score is basically to measure how well your feature is related to your Target for example, right? You can basically have correlation coefficient. You can have anything. It could be correlation It could be correlation plus variance. It could be just variance whatever you want to do. It's basically uh, That's a function you have to write just keep that in mind That's a function you have to write that function basically takes two arrays as inputs and computes a score uh, once you kind of write this function, you can basically pass that function to this uh, module, which is select K based or select percentile. And what SKLearn does for you is basically takes that function that you have written and computes the score of each of the features based on that particular function. And then from those scores that it calculates, it basically selects the top five or top 10 or top percentile, right? Whatever it is. So that's, that's one way, right? Now that so this function that you use could be one of variance, one of correlation, or could be something else as well. And now we are gonna talk about those kind of methods. So F regression. So these methods are based on F test, eliminate the degree of linear dependency between two random variables. So in case you are doing reg regression, right? If you're trying to do a regression problem, like house price prediction kind of a problem. So in those cases, that function to compute the scores, right? How relevant is one feature with respect to the target variable? You could use two methods. One is F regression, the other is mutual info regression. So what are these basically? So these are basically nothing but F, F regression is basically nothing but a F test. F test is basically a kind of hypothesis testing, the similar to what we have done earlier, right? So that's the exact kind of a hypothesis testing that we do to basically check if the if two variables are correlated or not, right? So one was Pearson correlation test that we have already talked about how you do that and we get a p-value for that kind of a thing, right? So there's another test. So there have, we have talked about all of this earlier also. There's another kind of test which is called F test which is basically to do the same thing right if two variables are correlated or not right and if yes then uh, uh correlated or not so your null hypothesis would be they're not correlated and you would get a p-value for that right if your p-value is extremely low then you would basically say hey i think they are correlated right so that's the idea of f regression uh, mutual info regression is again something of that sort except it uses uh, a different kind of uh, underlying uh, theory I would say for kind of infer if values are correlated or not right so mutual information methods can capture any kind of statistical dependency but they are non-parametric uh, they require so that require more samples for accurate predictions and we'll talk about all of this in a while and we'll see the benefits of using f regression versus mutual info regression uh, the understanding uh, mutual information theory is a big theory as such itself and there's a whole underlying I would say field of study as such which kind of concerns around mutual information and all of that. Uh, I would request you if you're curious and if you're for it, definitely go ahead and look into mutual information. 
uh, and how that is calculated same if you are interested now for it go and see what is the f test i would basically give you some keywords which are basically anova check out what is an anova uh, check out what is uh, f test basically f distribution basically so f tests are basically all tests which are based on this particular distribution called f distribution so just go and look at that and you would basically be able to figure out what is it but i'm not going to go into the inferential statistics details a lot because uh, yeah those are not absolutely important to understand at this point the point to understand is that these are basically two kinds of tests two kind of inferring values if variables are statistically correlated or not right and that's that's what we do with this right similarly in case of classification there are three tests so one is chi-square we already know of course chi-square independence right you know the chi-square so chi-square basically are two kinds of tests right uh, one was goodness of it, the other was independence. So independence is the one that we are talking about here. So chi-square test, then the F classification test and then the mutual info which is basically the same thing for classification. So these are basically all kinds of uh, statistical tests again but for categorical variables, right? Uh, so you can use any of these selection metrics. Now let's understand how F test and mutual information test behave differently. And to do that what we do is we create a toy data set where we have three three basically three features right so you have x1 and then you have x2 and this is your third variable x3 which is nothing but the normal distribution from 0 and 1 right so standard normal distribution you just pick any point at random from a standard normal distribution that's it so this is the the, the third feature is nothing but just noise right so you just basically randomly uh, so you y and the third feature are gonna be not at all related right because the third feature is basically just basically a random noise right and y and x are directly related and you can see that uh, y and the second feature is also somewhat not it's not linearly related but some non-relation non-linear relationship exists between y and x2 right because y is a function non-linear function of x2 y is a linear function of x1 y is a non-linear function of x2 and the third feature is basically not even related to that right so now you create this data set and then you try and do the uh, f test right so f test you kind of do for both regression uh, f regression and as well as mutual information right based on both the tests and let's see what are the outcomes so in case your f test basically shows something like this your f test basically shows that hey the first feature is absolutely relevant the second feature is not at all relevant the third feature is definitely not relevant right so that's a problem right in case of that's and that's something that i've been kind of talking all throughout the session which is that f test is basically something based on linear relationship so linear correlation coefficient right? and correlation coefficient is basically based on linear relationships so in case of f test what you see is that it has a if there was a strong linear relationship it picked that up absolutely perfectly and it said that yeah first feature is strongly correlated but the second and the third features Nah, not at all because the third feature is definitely noise so it would not be correlated the second feature was a non-linear relationship right so non-linear relationship also kind of is not picked up correctly in case of mutual information you see that that's that's not the case that's surprising right because in non case of mutual information you see that the first import feature is important the second feature is also important and the third feature is not at all important right so that's the kind of inference you want to kind of get ahead so now what we do is basically you kind of compare the different uh, values right x and y you have plotted the values and you see the mutual information right so x and y and x1 y and x2 and y and x you know y and x3 you see is, a, is completely noise right so there's no relationship between y and x3 in case of f test as well as mutual information the value comes out to be zero which is perfectly fine in the first case also in case of f test you can see the value is absolutely one because there's a strong linear relationship mutual information theory is not actually based on calculating non-linear linear relationship or not it's basically just how much common information is between y and x and what is this common information and what is this whole mutual information theory you have to figure out i'm not kind of getting into that detail but it's basically not measuring linear correlationship that's what i'm saying right now so it's because it's not measuring linear the amount of degree of linear relationship so the value is definitely not one 
but what it does is basically capture relationship between variables right it could be linear it could be non-linear doesn't matter in this case the values are very strongly non correlated non linearly related right so that's why you have mutual information which is one but the f test gives you zero which is something that we are already kind of understand we understand the f test bit of things right we probably do not know how mutual information theory exactly works and that's something i would leave up to you but uh, in case of an f test you can clearly see that f test is zero because this is strong non-linear relationship and f test was basically based on correlation coefficient which is uh, and it's kind of if they're linearly correlated or not right so that's why f test comes out to be zero in this case uh, so that's something that you can obviously we have talked about this by now so John got a good measure of feature selection and was more confident than ever on it. He started reading on more techniques and this is what he found out. So now we're going to talk about some broad techniques of feature selection. So now we have talked about univariate feature selection on a very, uh, very granular level. So now we are going to talk about feature selection on a broad overview kind of a level because at the end of the day, you will realize uh, at the end of the lecture that you feature selection is not just kind of it's it's not a step by step method that we can kind of point out directly to it's more of a complex paradigm and it's a process that kind of goes up and beyond and all of that it's it's not like you do feature selection and you kind of rest forever in peace that's never going to happen you do feature selection and then you again do feature selection and then you do feature engineering then you do feature selection you have you, you have already know this right because of the initial lecture on how machine learning overall works it's never never like a one time process so that's what we are going to talk about right now so what we talked about as of now right where we kind of as of now everything that we have talked about right we have talked about variance relation variance reduction and then correlation based filtering then doing f test anovas or uh, chi square based in case of categorical variables all of those things that we have done is basically checking if our variable if our feature for every feature if it is relevant to the target variable or not and do this for each of the features right uh, before doing any machine learning or anything you can just do this at the starting of this is a part of pre-processing step as such right so that's the thing that's this is this whole set of methods are called filter filter methods right so filter methods are you have set of all features you select the best subsets and then you apply your learning algorithm and then you perform right so basically filter methods are used as a pre-processing steps right in this case you can see that the selection of features is independent of any machine learning. You did not apply machine learning. This is the most naivest thing that you do, which is basically do a pre-processing and then forget about this entire feature selection overall. You go to your machine learning algorithm, you fit your model. So you basically look at thousand examples. You just select the best hundred out of them and you build your model based on those hundred measure your performance. And that's it. You never look back, come back or anything of that sort, right? You just, select this 100 based on some variance threshold some correlation some f test so whatever it is you select 100 for once and overall and that's it you say this is it i have done it i'm not going to revise this forever ever in my life i'm going to rest in peace with this so that's it that's the example of filter methods right so the, all the examples that we saw right now are basically examples of filter methods so uh obviously we have talked about this so if your if your feature variable depending on if your feature variable is categorical and your response variable is categorical or continuous you can basically have this four kinds of tests right so these are all statistical tests we have we kind of understand the basic tests like work chi square we understand pearson's correlation uh anova is basically something which is extremely similar uh this is basically f test what we have here and then LDA is something else. So understand this is a basically at the end of the day all kind of statistical tests to infer if variables are correlated or not, right? So that's what you're trying to do in filter methods. So that's it. So that's all about filter methods, right? So filter methods are basically you have features, you select the best and you say, I'm not going to come back and look at them. So as opposed to that, uh, one thing that should be kept in mind before we kind of jump into the next method is that filter methods uh, do not remove multicollinearity. So if you have a lot of data points, if you have a lot of columns which are related to each other, you cannot remove them because inherently you are never checking for it, right? You are always checking for relation between feature and the target variable. You are never looking for correlation between two features, right? So if you are not looking for it, you would never be able to remove multicollinearity as well, right? So 
so feature filter methods are something that are not that are kind of if, if there's multi collinearity in the data your filter methods won't be able to help you remove those features right so that's the concept of filter methods you look at the data select the best fit your model go ahead and perform check performance and that's about it right you're never gonna come back uh, that's exactly opposite of what is here next the next idea is uh, called as wrapper methods in case of wrapper methods you have set of all features and then what you do is you generate a subset you kind of train your machine learning algorithm on that and then you come back based on what you see as a performance uh, choose a different subset or probably remove one feature come back again uh, and kind of do this iteratively right so your feature selection is never a one time process you kind of do this effectively a n number of times to kind of come up with based on how your machine learning model is performing right so inherently this is like a more like a search problem right so earlier it was basically one where you kind of look at individual feature relevant or not relevant or not now this is a part and that is univariate right now we are kind of doing a multivariate kind of analysis where we are looking at all features and we are trying to see the performance then we see the one which performs the worst remove it right and then kind of see the performance if it becomes better and then you see kind of do that right iteratively a lot of time that seems intuitive right so it's, it's not a one-time performance you like you do not select a feature and kind of go ahead and just train your machine learning you say start with all features and then you recursive you go back check your model if it's performing well enough compared to before awesome remove the worst feature again see if your model is performing better awesome remove the next worst piece feature right and you keep on doing until unless your model says tops performing uh, better right for example so probably there would be a point when you would have removed 15 features and then it probably doesn't perform as well as compared to when it was just with uh, 14 features removed so that's 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 a concept of wrapper methods right so wrapper methods you are basically using the model performance to infer which features to kind of remove and you're doing this iteratively recursively it's, it's not a one time of one time model fitting kind of a thing right so that's the understanding behind uh, wrapper methods it's pretty in, in, easy to understand right so we try and use a subset of features and train a model using them based on inferences we draw from the previous model we decide to add or remove features from the data set right so it could also be something like you start with 50 all the features that you have and then kind of drop one each of them one by one or you can just start with no feature and just basically add features right so that's that's any which way it works right so the problem is essentially reduced down to a search problem right so basically you are now uh, have this 50 features and you're just trying to look at search for the best possible combination and how do you search for the best possible combination is basically the one combination that gives you the best performance right so some common examples of wrapper methods are forward selection and backward feature in a elim backward elimination and recursive feature elimination right so uh, so now let's talk about what are they there as exactly they're the same things that we have talked about first is forward selection forward selection is an iterative method in which we start with having no feature in the model in each iteration we keep adding the feature which best improves our model Till an addition of a new variable does not improve the performance of model very simple you start with no 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 features at all and then you keep on kind of adding features that you think are relevant you could that could be based on say uh, variance threshold pearson correlation whatever it is uh, based on that you kind of uh, add features one by one and kind of see uh, the point till where adding a new feature doesn't probably make any more difference right or uh, that's the idea about forward selection the absolutely opposite to forward selection is the concept of backward elimination you start with all features and you remove the least significant features at each iteration so and you repeat this until no improvement in uh, is observed in removal of features right so this is also the concept of recursive feature elimination right so this is a concept we talked about first you start with 50 features you see out of the 50 feature which is the worst performing features right so worst performing in case of linear regression you already know is basically say the feature which has got the most uh, insignificant weight right so that probably means that that is that has got nothing to do with the y value so just remove it and then you do the next linear regression with 49 features and out of those 49 see the one that is again most is insignificant and you kind of remove it right and you keep on doing removing these features until uh, as long as your performance improves right in each iteration if your performance drops stop it that's it that's a simple algorithm right 
absolutely no 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 gradient descent nothing of those sorts very simple engineering hacks to do all of this right so recursive feature elimination method works by recursively removing attributes and building a model on those attribution models on those attributes that remain uh, it uses an external assigned uh, estimator which assigns weights to future for example coefficients of a linear model now if you when you kind of go to other machine learning algorithms you would basically see how those algorithms basically use uh, some ways to measure feature importances right so when you do that you basically would see that all machine learning algorithms basically have some sort of way of ranking which feature was important in decision making which feature is not important in case of linear regression you already know how to do that the weight of each feature basically kind of says if the feature was important or not so using that you can basically kind of make case for which feature needs to be dropped right in each iteration so it's a greedy optimization algorithm it repeatedly creates models uh, and keeps aside the best or the worst performing feature at each iteration it constructs the next model with the left feature until all features are exhausted it then ranks the feature based on the order of the elimination right so recursive feature el uh, elimination is something which is a slightly more optimized as compared to backward elimination which is basically where you kind of do this keep on doing this with all features till your all the features are removed and at each step you basically see that what was a performance improvement or dip, you know performance degradation that happened and based on that you order rank the variables in order of their uh, elimination right which which feature basically removal of which feature kind of gave the worst uh, best improvement and which feature kind of removal gave the best degradation the worst degradation right so you do that and you can just directly use sklearn.feature selection you can just directly improve R import rfe and then you do rfe.fit so this is something that you are already familiar with right so this is how you implement rfe in uh, python so what you do is you just import this module rfe and then you say rfe.fit right so first you instantiate the model uh, so your model is linear regression so to instantiate your rfe class you would have to pass what is the model that you are trying to use in this case it's a linear regression the housing price problem and you then say how many features that you want to use right so in this case say 10 so based on that you say rfe.fit which is something that you already know uh, the same way you do model.fit so rfe.fit basically what would do is it basically would run uh, iterations multiple times by dropping features at each step and then uh, out of those features it would basically select the 10 most important features right the features which have the highest impact on machine learning algorithms performance remember these are not the 10 most related features or 10 most features with low least variance right this is rfe so what it is doing is basically selecting the 10 most features which have the best improvement uh, best performance when it comes to model performance right so it's basically trying to see for accuracy or in this case RMSE right so mean uh, trying to see if, what, what are those 10 features top 10 features which can basically uh, top 10 features which can basically improve your performance of the algorithm to the best right so that's the idea uh, so if you do print rfe.support you basically see the 10 features that it has selected and if you do rfe.ranking you can basically see the corresponding rank that it has calculated of each of the features right so all those features which are basically ranked as one two and all of those those are the ones which are uh, which are gonna be selected the higher the rank the, 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 they are not probably gonna be selected right so in this case it's gonna select the top 10 features so all those ones which rank one and two and five and all of those are gonna be selected anything with higher rank than nine would basically not be selected higher rank than 10 sorry would not be selected so that's the idea of uh, of using RFE so RFE is basically just gonna rank all the features uh, it's gonna basically run the model iteration 30 in whatever the number of features there are if there are 35 features it's gonna run it run the model 35 times each time it's gonna drop the worst performing features until and unless it's not left with any features to drop at all and based on that it's gonna calculate which feature was important and that's how you end up with this kind of a matrix right so it has got true so you basically select the top 10 best performing features Log on to Grey Atoms learning platform to unlock more free content. Subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates.